the chapter in which Eve fulfills her final duty as a birth slave and God sets brother against brother to quench his thirst for blood in a recurring theme that will play out again and again for thousands of years. Brothers and believers slaughtering each other by the millions in the name of God. Stick around. Okay, I need to warn you that Adam and Eve and baby Jesus will all cry angel tears if you don't click that subscribe button and hit that little notification bell. So, you better do it now. Now, on with the show. In the Bible, the first three chapters give us a quick rundown of creation. And chapters 2 and 3 make sure to put woman in her place. Despite being a helper, we never see her do anything, literally anything, beyond creating sin. No other lessons to be learned from Eve at all, just sin. Now, in chapter 4, she's going to have a few babies, all boys of course, fulfilling her duty to bear children, then she vanishes. Mentioned later, only when reminding women of their place. In fact, her only line in this chapter, I've gotten a man-child with the help of the Lord, surely smacks of misogyny. Not just any kind of child, but specifically a man-child. Eve herself is telling all women who come after her that, well, almond joy is better than a mounds. And every time you feel like a nut. In the next couple of chapters, the authors will waste mad amounts of space and words just telling us which man descended from which man, the true exemplification of a patriarchal line. A mindless string of boring, meaningless begats when it could have been teaching us about the lives of Adam and Eve and given her character some meaning, besides just being the cause of sin and the first human 3D printer. I mean, it opens with Eve dropping a couple of babies, then forgets about her for the rest of the chapter until we need her to crank out another baby. Eve fulfilling her purpose. She caused the sin which caused the downfall of all of humanity, then she drops some babies and she's out. She has three babies in chapter 4, Cain, Abel, and Seth. Then in Genesis chapter 5 verse 4 it says, And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. Then he begat more children, we presume with Eve is the last direct indirect mention of her in the Bible. After this, when the Bible refers to Eve, it's to vilify her for the sin she created or to point out how she was lesser than Adam. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3, But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray by the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. You may have heard that scripture, 1 Timothy 2 12, which says, But I do not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man, but to remain silent. That's a fairly popular one, an old chestnut if you will. But did you know the very next scriptures, 1 Timothy 2, 13 and 14, blame Eve for this? For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And it was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. In my previous videos, I mentioned how having Adam be created first, in a way, gave him dominion over Eve. Here we see someone who has read that text and is using it against women. We didn't have to wait for modern examples of someone oppressing women because of their interpretation of the Eve story. It happens right here in a later chapter of the Bible. Hmm. So at this point, let's forget Eve. The Bible certainly does. And besides, this god monster craves blood. In fact, it's not hard to find examples of the followers of the evil god monster of Abraham killing each other. Jews kill each other throughout the Old Testament. Christians have been killing each other since the foundations of their church. And Muslim has been killing Muslim since the death of Muhammad, and probably before. Believer killing believer, brother killing brother. And why not? The fourth chapter in the Book of Death opens with brother killing brother, prompted directly by the actions of the evil god monster of Abraham. An interesting side note, it's not just brother against brother. In a way, the Bible sets farmer against herder. I'm curious if there's ever been any animosity between farmers and herders because of the way the Bible treats Cain and Abel. If you know of some examples, let me know in the comments below. Let me explain that though. Genesis 4 verse 3 says, And she bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. There seems to be a negative connotation to the word but here, and at first I thought it was just me reading into it, but it sure seems like the author favors herders over farmers. In the following scriptures, Cain offers God the fruit of the ground, and Abel offers the fat of the firstlings of his flock. 
both offerings presumably being the best of what their trades produced. Yet God frowns on Cain's offering and smiles on Abel's, which stirs Cain against Abel. Perhaps nothing, perhaps a subtle slight to those who work the ground. Anyway, back to the main point. Something I want to mention is that in earlier chapters of the book of death, it mentions God specifically makes working the ground hard. And I would argue that farming in those days was probably a lot more labor intensive than herding. Not that both aren't hard, but in this case, God specifically increased one's difficulty level as a punishment. So in other words, Cain worked his ass off, slaving under the curse of God in the hardened ground. Then he offers God his best and was shunned, while his younger brother, Abel, worked less, offered less the fat of the flock, not the meat, but was given the praise of God. Then when Cain was upset for being shunned, God adds insult to injury by saying, Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, And the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. Wait, he did well. It doesn't say he made a bad offering. It says he chose to work the field, which should be noble considering the difficulty level involved, and he brought the fruit of the field as an offering. What's wrong with that? How is that not good and why is it not accepted? No reason is given. So do you blame him for getting mad and making a face? So what comes next doesn't make a lot of sense for several reasons. As we all know, Cain kills Abel, but they were both raised by Adam and Eve in the presence of God himself, who literally interacts and talks to these people. Yet, despite all this, Cain murders his brother because he's not getting enough godly attention. Wouldn't God know what he was doing would drive Cain to murder? Talk about some bad parenting. Somebody clearly didn't get hugged enough as a child. Either Cain was quite a fragile individual to let such things disturb him to the point of killing his brother, or there was more to it than what is told in the Bible. Either way, it looks a lot like a setup. Just as Eve was set up by God to fail in the Garden of Eden in chapters 2 and 3, Cain is clearly being set up here, although her punishment is much more severe. It's almost as though he's being rewarded for the bloodshed he caused. Throughout the Old Testament, including the next chapter, it's demonstrated that to live a long life was a reward from God, and yet Cain was punished not by being killed, but by being given a long life. Genesis 4, verses 15. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one would kill him. Hashtag punished. And apparently his other punishment was not being allowed to work the ground. Genesis 4, verses 12 says, When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crop for you. Which doesn't really sound so bad because it was such a crap job anyway. So, hashtag punished. And he was made to be a restless wanderer on the earth. Our first poet. Aw, oh, poor baby. He goes on to live a long life and have many children. Hashtag punished. All things you would consider as rewards, not punishments. Once again, a slap on the wrist compared to Eve's fate. A woman eats a piece of fruit and she's damned to be a slave to her husband and to have pain in childbirth all the live long day. Not only that, but she damns all women who follow her to the same fate. But a man murders his brother, and all he has to do is change jobs and move to another city. Hashtag punished. So now, reflecting back on my opening statement about believers killing one another to satisfy this god monster's bloodlust, it's easy to see why they do it. Right out of the gate, the example has been set. The very first man to murder another man does so for the love of God. Cain became jealous of God and killed Abel, all while God sat and watched. And likewise, for thousands of years, generation after generation, they slaughter each other and everyone else in the name of their God, the evil God monster of Abraham and his book of death. So what are your thoughts? Do you think Cain's punishment was severe enough? Was Eve's punishment too severe? Let me know in the comments below. Remember, avoid angel tears from baby Jesus. They burn like acid and hit that subscribe and notification bell. Thank you, and take care.